Now this Washington date, he did quite a bit of those things by himself going out, and he'd never get there in time to rehearse, so he'd walk in cold and hear what they were doing and he would just join right in as if he'd been playing with them for weeks. When they would modulate or change keys, he heard for a minute where they were going and then his instinct and his great ears would take him to the right place. It was amazing. I've seen him and heard him do that many times in different situations. This particular situation was great because it was a big band and it's a little harder to do it with a big band, playing in between the lines than it would be with a small band where the pianist can just take you to where you have to go if you don't know where you're going. Well, for example, in the arrangements there are spaces. If there's no comping and he doesn't know it, he doesn't know where it's going. But in a small band, if it's new to him and he hasn't played it before and he doesn't know where it's going, the piano player can always give you some accompaniment to take you to where you're going. And someone with his great ears and instinct had no problem. It was always amazing to me to see how he overcame all of these little difficulties. My three years with his quintet were like going to graduate school. I stood next to this colossal giant every night and listened to the outpourings of true, raw genius. No matter what type of situation we were in, he came through like with a home run every time. Well, I remember when he first got that plastic saxophone, I was with him at the time, and I, I'm sure it was in Detroit. Someone came up, I think the manufacturer's representative came up and gave it to him, and he looked at it and laughed and played it and enjoyed it. And we were amazed that he was able to get anything out of it. And I understand that he kept it for a little while and, and played it at various times. Back then, every now and then, Charlie, like most of us, needed some money. And he could always get a certain amount of money by pawning his horn. And uh, this particular time, once the guy gave him the plastic horn, he pawned his. And so uh, I suspect that's the reason he stayed on that plastic horn for a little while, having neglected to uh, get the money to get his horn out of pawn. But uh, it really didn't matter. I think he could play a tomato can and make it sound great. On top of everything else, I think you can hear in his playing. He was the same type of man that his music projected. He was kind, he was considerate. He was a very modest, humble man. A lot of people may not know this. There are all kinds of anecdotes and stories about him, but he was really a shy, humble person and he was thoughtful and considerate of other people. And you could hear that in his playing, the great beauty in his playing. There was some anger, we all get angry, and you could hear the anger in his playing when he felt that way. Um, I think he more than most of us, you could hear his feelings when you listen to him because he was so proficient that he could get out anything he felt where most of us can't always do that. Uh, he was a unique individual, and he was the father of all of us. <laughs>